How exciting. In this lesson, we will start doing fun stoichiometry math on reactions in solution. We'll use molarity as a conversion factor in our mole tunnels. We'll also learn what a titration is and how they help chemists solve mysteries. Looking in our rear view, we classified three flavors of solution-based reaction, precipitation, acid base, and redox. We also learned some powerful mathematical tools related to solutions, especially the big M molarity. Now it's time to put these tools to good use. You'll need a piece of paper. The great news here is that the mole tunnel is compatible with molarity. All we need to do is put volume in the amounts row. Try pausing the video and doing this practice problem on your own. I'll go over it in the next slide. To start, we will write a balanced chemical equation for this reaction, which I've done. I've colored the two pieces of given information in the problem. Volume of magnesium chloride solution is in red and concentration of magnesium chloride in this solution is in orange. The volume measures an amount, so I've put that in the amounts row underneath magnesium chloride. In my first conversion, I want to turn liters of magnesium chloride solution into moles of magnesium chloride. I use the big M molarity to do this conversion. Next, I'll use the mole ratio from the problem to convert to moles of magnesium hydroxide. Lastly, our answer needs to be in grams, so I'll use the molar mass of magnesium hydroxide to convert to grams. Here's the math. You can check your work by making sure your units cancel and the top of every conversion factor is always equivalent to the bottom. Notice that we did not need to use the molar mass of magnesium chloride. This is because our measurement of magnesium chloride was in volume, not mass. Have you ever heard of the technique, the titration? Titrations are often a sticking point for young and elder chemists. The process itself is actually quite simple, but the explanation feels very complicated. I'm going to try to clear things up for you here. In a titration, we use solution stoichiometry to solve a mystery. Usually, the mystery is something like, how much compound X is in my beaker? We call compound X the analyte because it's the thing being analyzed. And now, I'm going to teach you how to do a titration using a very special and stupid mystery. We want to know, how many bald men are in my beaker? And everyone knows that bald men love wearing hats and react with hats according to the following reaction equation. So I'll load up my burette with a known number of hats. And when I drop those hats into the beaker, I know those baldies can't help themselves from putting on the hat. Finally, since I can't see either the hats or the bald men with my bare eyes, I need to add one last ingredient, an indicator. This indicator will turn pink if it detects any leftover hats in the solution. Let's begin. To start, I add a single hat and the color of the solution does not change. There's at least one bald man in this beaker. Let's add another hat and still no change in the solution. One more hat, still no color change. And another hat, still no color change. Once more, ah, the solution is turned pink. So after I added five hats, the indicator told me that some hats were left over, meaning the number of bald men I had in the beaker was four. While that was a very dumb example, it's very similar to how we use titrations in the lab as this practice problem will indicate. We have an unknown acid in the beaker and a known amount of base in the burette. We will add tiny bits of base until all the acid is reacted. 
And then the indicator will tell us that the reaction is complete. We'll use stoichiometry and mathematic to solve for our answer. I'd like you to pause the video and try it out. All right, here's how to solve the question. I'm using HA to signify my unknown acid. Of course, the first step is to write a balanced chemical equation. Notice that it takes two moles of HA to react with one mole of barium hydroxide. This is a common place for beginners to mix up. The products are two moles of water along with the counter ions Ba2 plus and A minus. It took 1.87 liters of barium hydroxide to fully react with the acid. So I'll use stoichiometry to convert from liters of barium hydroxide to moles of acid. My first conversion is the molarity of the barium hydroxide solution. My next conversion is the mole ratio from the balanced equation. This gives me 0 0.374 moles of acid. Lastly, the problem asks for the molar mass of the acid. We know that molar mass is calculated as grams of acid per moles of acid. Well, we get the grams of acid from the problem and moles of acid from our calculation. Plugging these in, the answer is 89 grams per mole. I feel pretty confident that this amino acid is alanine. 